Always good to get the thoughts of Daniel Shaw. Daniel is a professor and senior research fellow at the Council on Hemispheric Affairs, and he is live on the program. Uh, Danny, the European Commission president lashed out at Russia, really, over its alleged foreign interference. But I put it to you at the same time, the EU is calling for a fresh election in Belarus and is quite forwardly backing the opposition council. Yeah, the European Union and the West in general and U.S. imperialism are the uh, last forces with any uh, moral force uh, to be able to intervene in Belarusian affairs. Look what these very forces, the EU and the US, have done to Syria, to Venezuela. Uh, look at their interference with the maiden counter revolution in 2014 in Ukraine. So they would like nothing more than to take really what's a, a small but significant piece of the global chessboard back from. Uh, any Russian influence and back from what really is the last uh, vestige of the Soviet Union, if you will. How defining a moment do you think the EU's official recognition of the opposition council is essentially ignoring the current government? You, you alluded to it there, perhaps parallels can be drawn with Washington's recognition of Juan Guaido as Venezuela's president last year. Yeah, their recognition of uh, Slavana Tikonskaya is very similar to the recognition of, of Juan Guaido. More than 50, uh, quote-unquote, Western countries recognize Guaido. This is so that they have a justification to siphon off the gold of Venezuela and, of course, the massive uh, oil and gas resources of, of Venezuela and Sitgo and, and PDVSA. Juan Guaido is their puppet president, who they consider to be legitimate. That's the way that they can... Uh, uh, legally, quote unquote, rob Venezuela's resources. So it seems they have a similar color counter revolution playbook uh, blueprint in store for Belarus. No different from what they've done uh, in Ukraine, what they've tried to do unsuccessfully in Iran, uh, what they dream about doing to Russia and China as well. There doesn't seem to be much nuance or in depth discussion in Brussels. Are, are you surprised that Europe's taking sides so blatantly in such issues like this? It comes as uh, no surprise, and unfortunately, it's the same apparatus and network of think tanks, public relations firms uh, in Brussels, in Washington, D.C., in, in, in Paris, um, that make these oppositions, whether it's the quote-unquote Syrian opposition or it was the Libyan opposition some years back, uh, it's the same thing that they continually do. It should be seen as nothing more than attempts at recolonization, some of which have been uh, miserable failures. Others have been very successful. But what the West has been most successful at uh, through their sanctioning and blockading of any country with an iota of, of sovereignty is enforcing a, a ton of suffering and hunger on the people of, of Venezuela, on the people of Cuba and in, in Nicaragua and in Pyongyang. And this is what it looks like they want to do now with their uh, sanctions against Belarus, a country of 9.4 million people who can't afford to be sanctioned. They have enough uh, issues, especially now uh, at the height of a global pandemic. That, that's what, I, that's what I'm just going to say, Danny. What consequences, if any, do you expect the resolution to have for Lukashenko and Belarus in general? The consequences will be uh, felt by the public sector, by the everyday people. That's the design of sanctions, as it was stated by the Undersecretary of uh, the State Department in 1960. Um, when the U.S. first began their sanctions against Cuba, uh, quote unquote, these uh, sanctions were there to stoke hunger and stoke hopelessness and despair uh, in hopes that the Cuban people, in this, in this case the Belarusian people, will rise up against uh, Lukashenko. This has been the CIA, the State Department, the Pentagon, the imperialist playbook now for how many uh, decades? Danny, a uh, pleasure as always to have you on the program from New York City today. Daniel Shaw, Senior Research Fellow at the Council on Hemispheric Affairs. Thank you.